Good evening, my brothers and my sisters and Bwana Sifiwe. We want to welcome you to this very special day in the calendar of the Christian Church. This is an important day because it's what we call the Ascension Day, the 40th day since Jesus rose from the dead. And today, we, in this evening, worship him because he is our Lord and because he is risen, we celebrate this day. The introductory sentence. We have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Hebrews chapter 4 and verses 14. Jesus lifted up his hands and while he blessed his disciples, he parted from them. Luke 24, verse 50 and 51. Let us pray the collect for this evening. Almighty God, as we believe your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into the heavens, so may we also in heart and mind thither ascend and with him continually dwell, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We welcome you, our brothers and our sisters, as you hear the message for this evening from our brother, the Reverend Tobias. Karibu, my brother. I want to greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Good morning and praise the Lord. It's a honor to be before the Lord again as we continue seeking his face, as we continue coming to him, as we continue standing in the gap on behalf of our nation, on behalf of the body of Jesus Christ in relation to the COVID-19 pandemic today being the Ascension Day. And as we look into the Word of God, it's my prayer that the Lord is going to minister to you and the Lord is going to teach you and draw you closer to himself. And as you watch and listen to us, it is good for you to know that as a church leadership here at SEK St. Peter's Kahawa Sukari, we are praying for you, and we trust and look forward to when we'll be meeting again and fellowshipping together in this church hall. 
And in the Christian faith, there are several ecumenical feasts that we celebrate. These feasts include Easter, Pentecost, Ascension Day, among other feasts that we do celebrate. Ascension Day is usually celebrated on a Thursday, a day like today, which is the 40th day of Easter. This year we are celebrating it today, the 21st of May 2020. And I would like to share with us briefly from the Gospel passage. And the Gospel passage that you're going to read this morning is from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter number 24. I'll read from verses number 36 to 53. Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter number 24, starting from verses number 36 to 53. And I will read by the help of the Lord. Now, as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were terrified and frightened and supposed that they'd seen a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do doubt arise in your hearts? Behold, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself, handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. But while they still did not believe for joy and marveled, he said to them, Have you any food here? So they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb. And he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of this. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. Now it came to pass, while he blessed them, that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. And as we look and see from the Gospel of Luke that we've read, Luke chapter number 24, it records experiences of several people who had first-hand experience with the risen Christ. These people who were depressed because of the death of Jesus Christ would eventually become joyful and full of praise after meeting with the risen Christ. Luke gives an account of the women who had gone to the tomb with spices and eventually came to know that Jesus Christ is alive. These women go back to inform the 11 disciples of their findings. And when they go to these 11 disciples and let them know of what they had found about Jesus Christ, the disciples also ran to the tomb to see for themselves. After Jesus, we see Jesus appears to the two disciples who are on their way going to a mouse. And when they come to know that they've been walking with the Lord Jesus Christ all this time, these two disciples are excited. And in that evening time, they decide to go back 
to Jerusalem to inform the other disciples that indeed the Lord Jesus Christ has risen. And as they are in that house, they are talking and informing them about the appearance of Jesus Christ. The Lord himself appears to them. And therefore, my brothers and sisters, as you listen to me today, there are several things that are evident in relation to the appearances that I have mentioned above. First, Jesus Christ proved to his followers that he had truly been resurrected, for not only did he stand in their presence, but he also showed them the wounds on his hands. And therefore we see that this is a clear indication that indeed Jesus Christ rose from the dead and he was not a ghost, as his disciples were thinking. Secondly, we see that Jesus Christ showed his followers from different parts of the Old Testament that he is the Messiah and that he must suffer and rise from the dead. Fulfillment of the Old Testament scriptures that had talked about Jesus Christ coming, that had talked about the death of Jesus Christ, that had talked about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And therefore the Lord Jesus Christ, from this we see, he shows his followers from the different parts that he indeed is the Messiah and that he must suffer and rise from the dead. And because of the death and resurrection, the message of repentance and forgiveness in sins could be preached in the name of Jesus Christ. And this message of forgiveness and repentance that is being preached in the name of Jesus Christ could be preached in all nations, beginning with Jerusalem, for they were witnesses of his death and rising from the dead. And therefore, my brothers and my sisters, as you listen to me today, in this ascension day, as we remember this historic event in the life of the church, there are some truths that we want to learn in relation to Jesus being taken into heaven. And as we look into that passage of scripture, Luke's description of ascension of Jesus Christ, we see some two truths that I'm going to share with us in relation to the ascension. In the ascension of Jesus Christ, we see that there is the priestly blessing that Jesus Christ gives to his followers. Secondly, other than the priestly blessing, we see that there is an aspect that the people worship Jesus Christ joyfully. And therefore today as we reflect on this, we should remember that we have received the priestly blessing from the Lord Jesus Christ. As we remember the ascension day, the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have received the priestly blessing. Numbers chapter 6 verses 22 to 27. The Bible says, The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. My brother and my sister, Jesus' action of lifting up his hands and blessing the disciples was a priestly blessing. The way Luke clearly tells us, Jesus, who was blessing the disciples, we see that there is a spiritual setting of the temple and priesthood. And as the resurrected Christ, Jesus the Messiah, has the authority to bless you. He has the authority to bless me. And therefore, as you listen to me, as you watch this day, this Thursday, the ascension day, we know that the Lord has blessed you and is going to keep you. We know that the Lord is going to make his face to shine you and is going to be gracious to you this ascension day. We know that the Lord is going to turn his face towards you and give you peace. 
Even as we continue with the COVID-19 pandemic, some of us are looking for peace. Some of us are looking for joy. Some of us are looking that the Lord is going to minister to them. The Lord, when he lifted up his hands and blessed the disciples, he declared a priestly blessing upon your life and upon my life. And in that blessing, the Lord is saying he's going to bless you and keep you. My brother, in this time of difficulty, in this time of pandemic, the Lord has blessed you and he's telling you, he's assuring you and he's assuring me that he's going to bless me and keep you. The Lord is also telling you that he's going to make his face to shine upon you and he's going to be gracious to you in this day. Know that the Lord's face is upon you. And know that the Lord is going to give you peace. And therefore, my brothers and my sister, the act of Jesus Christ blessing his disciples, lifting up his hands and giving them the priestly blessing is also a blessing for you. It is also a blessing for me. And secondly, we see that the disciples worshipped the Lord with joy. For it says from verses number 52, And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Today in this ascension day, Luke is reminding us after the Lord declaring his priestly blessings upon our life, it is an opportunity for you and me. It is an opportunity for us to go and worship the Lord continually. To continue worshiping the Lord with joy. To continue dwelling in the presence of the Lord as these disciples did. For 53 says, and they were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. As you listen to us in your home, as you watch us in your office, wherever you are, as we remember the ascension day, it is an opportunity and a moment for us to continue worshipping the Lord and blessing him all the time with joy. It is a reminder to us as Christians to be people who are living in a life of praise and joy as we wait for the return of the ascended Lord. This one calls for total worship of and to the Lord. We need to worship the Lord. We need to give him the total worship that he deserves. In 2 Samuel chapter 6, when the ark of the Lord was brought back into Jerusalem, David, who was the king of Israel, he enjoyed worshiping the Lord. He jumped up. He worshipped the Lord with each and everything that he had. And therefore today, as we remember the Ascension Day, it is an opportunity for us to worship God with joy, to rejoice because we know that that is something that God is calling us to do. And as we worship him, we need to have a heart that is full of display, overflowing into passionate flow of the joy that is in our heart because of our Lord Jesus Christ. Several Psalms, the writers wrote urging the listeners to worship the Lord God with joy. Psalm 98 verses 4 to 6, the Bible says, Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music to the Lord with the harp with the harp and the sound of singing, with the trumpet and the blast of the ram's horn, shout for joy before the Lord, the Lord our King. This ascension day, my brother and my sister, God has already given us the priestly blessing. 
And he wants us to respond to that priestly blessing that is given to us. How are we going to respond? We are going to respond as we worship God with joy, as we worship God with gladness, as we worship God with the joy that is given unto us. And that is why Paul tells us, rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice because the worship of the Lord that we have to give him, we have to do it joyously. Psalm 47 verse 1. The Bible says, clap your hands, all you nation. Shout to God with cries of joy. My brothers, in the midst of this pan pandemic of COVID-19, it is not a moment of us living a gloomy life. It is a moment of us living a life of joy. Why? Because of the ascension of Jesus Christ. For when he ascended into heaven, he blessed us with his priestly blessing. And as a result, we have to respond to the priestly blessings. And therefore, my brother and my sister, as I conclude, let us remember about the ascension of Jesus Christ today. Let us remember that Christ has already released his blessings upon us. And we are enjoying these blessings, unfathomable blessings. And as we enjoy them, we ought to continue worshipping the Lord God joyfully. I call upon you, my brother and my sister, as we enjoy the priestly blessings that God has given to us, the one that he raised upon us when he was ascending into heaven, may we also respond to that blessing by worshiping the Lord joyfully, praising his holy name, for he is our Lord who deserves to be worshipped, and our worship should be a joyful worship. Let us pray. And our Lord, we want to thank you for your word that we've heard. We pray that you'll continue speaking to us. We pray that your Holy Spirit will continue to minister to us and you will teach us and draw us closer to you even as we continue living and enjoying the priestly blessings that you've given to us as your sons and daughters. Lord, we bless you and we worship you. I pray, oh God, that the joy that comes from that priestly blessing is going to be released upon the lives of our listeners and they are going to worship you joyfully. We give you glory and honor because you are our faithful God. We pray all this in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.